Let's solve the advent of code 2021 day 19 puzzle using Ivy. In this puzzle, we have a bunch of scanners that are picking up signals from beacons, and each scanner can tell the XYZ position of a detected beacon relative to the scanner's own position. But we don't know where each scanner is, nor which direction it's facing. Although thankfully, and somewhat unbelievable, each scanner has turned itself to be oriented with either the X, Y, or Z axis. And the puzzle tells us that sometimes two scanners pick up the same 12 beacons, which is enough to figure out how to transform one scanner's coordinate space into the others. The puzzle also says that there are enough of these overlaps to figure out how to transform all the scanners into a single coordinate space. And then, having figured out which beacons are picked up by multiple scanners, we're supposed to count how many unique beacons there are in total. I have the data loaded into Ivy. Sample is a three-dimensional array. And for each scanner, there's a list of beacon positions. And each beacon position is an XYZ triple. Now, the scanners pick up different numbers of beacons, but Ivy needs the array to have a consistent dimension. And so the beacon lists are padded out with triples using the special coordinate missing, which is one half. And you can see that in sample one, there's one missing entry at the end because there's actually only 25 beacons that it's detecting. And there are no halves in this world, so the one halves are definitely impossible and they're easy to, to notice. So let's start right by writing code that filters out those extra entries. So we'll say a position is valid if there's no halves. And then we can say, you know, tell me whether sample one of 24, 25, 26 is valid. The first two are, the last one's not. So we want to be able to pull those out, which is a select, but it's on the, the first coordinate. So that's a transpose select. So y. Now we can pull them out. Is valid x, t cell x. And now we can say, give me the valid entries from 24, 25, 26. It's just the two with 24 and 25. All right, so that was just sort of basic warm up. Now, how do we figure out which beacons are seeing the same samples? Um, I think what we're probably supposed to do here is that there's only six different ways to rearrange the axes, and then uh, there's two different ways to you know, negate each of the axes, and so it's something like 24 or 48 or something like that, different transformations we could do, and then we could sort the resulting points, and then they should be in roughly the same order uh, as another scanner, and then we should be able to maybe do some sort of walk through to figure out which ones match and then use that to figure out does this scanner overlap and if so like what is the the coordinate transformation that does it and that seems like a lot of trial and error and and i don't really feel like writing that when we had the seven digit display problem earlier um, again i thought the expect, expected solution was to just try all the permutations and see which ones work and i was really happy that instead we were able to compute an order independent signature of each piece, and that would let us see which piece was which, even though it was all scrambled up. And so, you know, I'm not one to put down a perfectly good hammer, so let's try that order independent signature approach here, too. So, if we see many of the same beacons in a particular scanner, then if we compute some characteristic of the, the beacon set that, you know, shows up in, in the relationship between the beacons, then we should be able to get the same numbers in one set and another and see the overlap. And the characteristic that I have in mind is that we can just take the pairwise distance between all the beacons in the set. And so then if there's 12 in common, then we should get the same distances showing up uh, between those 12 in both sets. And we can pick really any distance metric we want as long as it's invariant on these various coordinate transforms. So let's say the distance between one beacon, one beacon detected and another beacon detected First of all, if, it's, uh, if they're missing beacons, there's going to be zero. And otherwise, let's say it's the absolute value of the coordinate distances uh, cubed and summed. It doesn't really matter. We want something that's not going to have too many collisions. You know, maybe they were planning for this with, with the usual sort of square distance. So let's just cube things. Uh, then the signature of a particular scanner is just going to be all the distance pairs of all of its beacons. So we can say sig sample of two. It's a very large number, a large set of numbers. That's fine. Uh, there's a whole bunch of zeros in there because each beacon is at distance zero from itself, and the missing beacon is distance zero from, from everything. So let's get rid of the zeros. Um, actually, first, let's get two of them. We know that sam sample two and sample five are supposed to overlap. They told us that in the puzzle. And so let's get rid of the zeros. Zero cell S2 and S5 is a 5 equals zero. Cell S5. 
And then let's just count how many they have in common, how many of these numbers in that large list. They have 132 in the one direction, 132 in the other direction. And 132 is 12 times 11, which is exactly what you would expect if you saw 12. Uh, it's the minimum that you would expect if you saw 12 uh, samples in common. And so anywhere we see at least 132, that's an overlap. So let's write code to compute that overlap. Same thing we just did. We'll say x equals x not equals 0, cell x, and y equals y not equals 0, cell y. And then we'll say the number of x and y and number of y and x, whatever the minimum is, that's the amount of overlap we really have. And then we can say signatures of sample 2 overlapping with the signatures of sample 5 is the 132 that we had, which is exactly what we want. Now we can compute the signatures of all the samples and then check for overlap against all pairs. So we'll say SS is the signatures of the samples. And then we say SS pairwise overlap with SS. Aha, so now we can see, for example, that scanners one and two overlap, that scanner three and five overlap and so on. Uh, we do wanna take out that diagonal because every scanner overlaps with itself. So let's start by taking the ones that are at least 132 and then we'll take out the diagonal uh, not equal and five. Perfect. So that is our adjacency matrix for which scanners overlap with each other. Um, so let's take two samples. We'll take sample two, or sorry, two scanners. We'll take scanner two and scanner five. So now we have S and T, uh, different numbers of, of things, which should help us keep our dimensions straight. And here are all the distances in S. It's just a whole bunch of numbers. And here are all the distances in T. Actually, I'm not gonna show them to you, but they're a lot of the same numbers. Let's see which ones of those appear. Whoops. There we go. So this is great. This shows us there's some rows where there's a lot of overlap and the other rows there's no overlap except for the trivial one. And so that's perfect. That tells us exactly which points in S and which points in T are the ones that we wanna keep. So if we take the rows, these are the ones we wanna keep from S. And so we can take those from S. These are the actual beacons as viewed by S that are in common with T. So let's save that. We'll say S common with T is S dist S in T dist T uh, bigger than one select S. All right, so S1 equals S common T. S1, yep, those are the same numbers. So then T1 equals T common S, S1, T1. All right, so this is great. Uh, these are the same beacons. They're in different orders. They have different axes arrangements. They might be pointing in different directions, but we know at least this is the same set of beacons. And now we just have to figure out how they correspond. Um, so, all right, next thing we need to figure out is which beacon is which, right? The first entry in S1 might not be this correspond to the first entry in, in T1. And it'd be helpful if we could rearrange them so that they did correspond. Um, we could try various permutations, but again, we have this idea of this order independent signature that we can compute that will just tell us the right way to do it. And so for now that we're narrowed down to just 12 beacons, we could compute the distance from one beacon to all the others, add those up, and that should be an order independent signature uh, for the beacons getting reordered. And so let's just try that. Let's see how far away each, uh, each of S1 is from itself, from the other ones in S1. And then let's look at how far away each of the T1 is from the other ones in T1. And we can see there's some of the same numbers there. So that number is there. Perfect. So now let's uh, save that. This is our beacon signature. And now if we just say, take the beacon signature of T1 and search for it in the beacon signature of S1 in there, that is the permutation of the reordering that we need to apply to T1 to get them into the same order as S1. So let's do that. And so now we should be able to check that beacon signatures match. They do, that's great. So now at least they're in the same order. Uh, T2 of one and S1 of one are the same beacon. The axes are still shuffled, the axes might be inverted, but at least we've got them in the right order now. So now we need to figure out, let's unshuffle the axes. How can we do that? Well, let's find some sort of signature for each axis and figure out what order those are in. 
And so let's say the signature for an axis is just going to be the pairwise distances between all the numbers in that uh, axis. So let's say the axis, the signature for a vector is going to be the pairwise distances. Let's square them this time. And then we want to do the, the signatures of columns. So we have to apply that to uh, the transpose. We'll say signature of x is the vector signature transpose of x. And so the column signature of S1, column signature of T2, sure enough, uh, those are the same numbers, just reordered. So that, if we search for one in the other, um, not in, iota, then that tells us how to reorder T2's columns to get S1's columns. So let's do that. We should be able to do transpose of transpose of T2 of that, because we're transposing, we're reordering columns, so we have to do it in the transpose space. So let's save that. So now the column signature of S1 and the column signature of T3, they are the same. That's great. So now the axes are in the right order. But we still have this problem that one might be pointing up and one might be pointing down. And we should be able to tell by just looking at successive entries and subtracting them and see whether one is bigger than the other. Uh, because if they're turned around, the bigger less than or the greater less than are only swapped. So we can just do that. We can say um, take you know, the beginning of S1 and compare it to the end of S1. So this is comparing pairwise entries in S1. And then we can do the same thing for T3. And we can see that the first column is exactly the same, but the second column is inverted. It starts with 1, 1 and 0, 0, and the third column is similarly inverted. So that's good. Uh, so if the entire column matches, that means it's pointing the right way. If something in the column doesn't match, it means it's pointing the wrong way and we need to flip it over. So let's compare those. We can do this. Great. And then we want to do the and of the transpose. Whoops, put the mouse in the wrong place. Ugh, fine. And of transpose, good. So now we have one, zero, zero, but what we really want is what we're supposed to multiply by. We want ones and minus ones. So that's easy enough. Minus one plus two times that will give us ones and minus ones. And now we want to actually multiply that by, what are we up to, T3? So say T4 equals T3 times that. There's T4, there's S1. These are now in the right order. They're pointed the right way. The only difference is the position of the scanner that's being added in. So we should be able to see that by just subtracting. If we say S1 minus T4, there we go. They're all the same. So we should be able to just take one of them. We'll say S1 minus T4 of one. That's what we want to add to T4 to get S1. And sure enough, that is S1. All right, so we have figured out how to take those 12 common beacons, shuffle, every, shuffle all the axes, flip them as necessary, add the offset, and we're back to the coordinate space in S1. So now what we really want to do is apply that set of transformations to the entire set of T and not just the 12 common ones. And that will give us the entire scanner set in the coordinate space of S. So let's put all of that together. We're going to start with S turning to match T, or I guess T turning to match S. We'll start by taking out the valid points. And then we're going to want to find the common ones. T1 equals T1 common S1. So now we should be down to 12 points. Now it could be that they're actually already lined up. And if they are already lined up, we might as well stop. So if they're completely fine already, then just leave T alone. And otherwise, we're going to work to reorder all of T into S. But we have to reorder just the T1s to figure out what the, the actual transformation is. So we'll start by doing the beacon signatures. And then we want to reorder that. And then the next thing we need to do is reorder the axes. And then we have to reorder those. So that was the transpose because we're doing the axes. See, transpose of T2 of P. Okay. And now we have to do the, um, the multiplying of the axes, which was minus 1 plus 2 times, uh, where to go? The and of the transpose of this thing, which was this. Right? Yes, I think that's right. All right, so then T4 was T3 times M. And then the final thing was we needed to add S1 minus T4, the first entry, and we needed to add that to everything. 
All right, so now we do add plus multiply of the transpose of transpose of L of T of P. So that's the reordering of the axes. Multiply to flip them and then add to set the offset. So that is all the valid points in T have been transformed by that. But then we want to keep the, the size the same. So we need to keep the, the invalid ones. And that should be everything. So now we should be able to say S, S2 turn S5. Oh, that didn't happen. Did I do something wrong? Maybe S doesn't exist. There we go. S turn T. There we go. All right. What we wanted was S and T, not S2 and S5, because those were just the valid ones. All right. So S turn T, that's how T turns to match S. Uh, we should be able to check and see if those are actually in S. Sure enough, they are. That's fantastic. And how many? Let's see. 12, that's, that's perfect. All right, so now we know how to turn one scanner to match another scanner that it does already overlap with. So we can start with scanner one, turn scanner two, maybe, to match scanner one, or some other scanner to match scanner one, and then some other scanner that matches one of those two to match that one. But we don't know, like scanner two might not overlap with one. You might have to go to scanner three or scanner four first. Um, and so the next thing we need to do is figure out what, what that order of turns is. And so to do that, we can go back to the entire overlap matrix that we had before. We had this, and that's our adjacency matrix. And we can pull out the overlaps for a given sample with m of 1, cell i out of 5. That's uh, 1 and 2. And so it tells us, you know, on 1, it overlaps with itself and overlaps with number 2. And so we know from day 12 that to remove a destination from an adjacency matrix, we can use this expression where we and it with the negative knot iota row m of 1 in i. So we say m use 3. That cuts out column 3, so you're not allowed to go to 3 anymore. All right. And we also know from the same day, day 12, that we can compute the next for a given vector of, of starting positions by taking the transpose of the OR of the transpose, M of I, so we're ORing together columns. Um, same thing, cell so A row M1. So we can say M next, 1, 2. From 1 and 2, you can go to 1, 2, 4, and 5. Probably want to go to 4 or 5 since 1 and 2 are where you started. Um, you can say M used 1, 2, next 1, 2, and you get just 4 and 5. Um, you try M next 1. Ooh, that didn't work. Ah. It, this really needs to be a vector, or the, the indexing is going to go bad. So if we say run row, one row one, that's great. That's, that's actually the right answer. All right. So now we're ready to figure out the order in which to turn the scanners. We can do a breadth first search. We can say, you know, the order for M, starting at the, vec the beacons in I, which is a vector, is going to be, well, if there's nothing left, then don't do anything. And otherwise, uh, let's strip out i, and then start with i, followed by m ordering m next i. Where can you go next? And so this is just going to bottom out once you can't go anywhere else. And so we can say m order starting at 1. Again, we have to say vector 1. It says start with scanner 1, which we're always going to start with. Turn 2 to match 1. Turn 4 to match one of those. Turn 5 to match one of those. And turn 3 to match one of those. That will get us our, our, you know, scanners all turned in the right direction. But we don't actually know which one we're supposed to turn to match, except at the beginning when there's only one that we could possibly turn it to match. So when we get to scanner four, do we turn it to match two or do we turn it to match one? It depends on what it overlaps with. So we need to figure that out. Um, let's simplify things by just reordering the scanners to be in this order so that it'll be one, two, three, four, five, and we just need to figure out what we're turning each one to match. So let's save that permutation. Let's reorder the, the samples. Let's reorder the adjacency matrix by reordering the rows and columns. Okay? And so now the right predecessor or a right predecessor for scanner i is some earlier number i, some smaller number i that it's connected to in this adjacency matrix. So let's say the turn pair for i is i followed by the minimum of m used i, we can't go to ourselves, next one row i. All right, so that's the smallest thing it's connected to that's not itself. 
And so I'm going to say m turn pair 3 is 3 and 2. So this 3 is the 3 we passed in, and this 2 says turn it to match number 2. And so what we really want is m turn pair of all of them, 1 drop iota 5. We don't care about 1. So it says turn 2 to match 1, turn 3 to match 2, turn 4 to match 2, and then turn 5 to match 4. Perfect. All right, so given that list of turns, let's write some code that applies all the turns in order to x. We're going to mutate x in place, which we'll have to remember for later when we call it. But so we'll see if the pairs to be turned are done, then we'll stop. And otherwise, we'll get the two coordinates from p1 of 1, p1 of 2, and then we'll say x of i equals x of j turn x of i. So we're turning x of i to match x of j. And then having done that one pair, we'll do the others in a recursive call. All right, so now we have all the turn pairs for m, right? We have those from before. And now we can turn it. We can say x equals x times 1. The times 1 is making a copy so that we're not mutating x. Um, and we'll do turn all. All right. So now this is a very large list still, but they've all been turned, in theory, to have the same coordinates. So now there's some actual duplicates in that list. So let's flatten the list, um, and then let's put it back. So we're flattening into one dimension and then putting it back into triples. Now we have 130 by 3. We can filter out just the valid ones. Now there's only 127. And then we can count how many of them are uh, when you check for a duplicate or check for the first entry that matches it are their own first entry. We've done this before. There are 79. There are 79 unique entries, and that is, in fact, the number we're supposed to have. All right, so let's put all of that together. Let's say merge x is going to be, we're going to compute the signatures of all the, the x's, and then we're going to get the overlaps, overlap, and they have to be at least 132, and then we're going to get the turn pairs, or sorry, the permutation for reordering. And then we're going to permute x, and then we'll permute m. And then we'll make up our work list of the turn pairs that we want. And then finally, we turn all um, w. And we don't have to do the times 1 here, because we already created a new x earlier when we permuted. All right. And then we should be able to count what we have left. That's the same thing we just did. We did this, and then we did x equals valid x, and then we did this. All right, so now we should be able to say count merge sample. 79, yes. All right, let's try the input. Count merge input. Hmm. Well, oh, there we go. 381. Let's see. Yes, that was the right answer. We got our star. On to part two. Hmm. All right, in part two it says, figure out where the scanners are relative to some fixed point, I guess, scanner one maybe, and then figure out the largest Manhattan distance between any two of them. Now, we didn't actually uh, compute the positions of any particular scanner, but we could do that by adding a dummy uh, zero value to a zero measurement, as though that was a beacon. And then we can, so if we say add zero sample one, now we have a zero entry at the top. And if we just run our usual transformations, that will transform each first sample to the coordinates relative to the, the uniform coordinate system. And so we can do merge of add zero sample. And then we should be able to say x of one of one, x of one of two, x of one of three. These are the, the positions of the actual scanners. Sorry, did that wrong. 2 of 1, 3 of 1. These are the positions of the actual scanners. And so we need to extract those. So we'll say 1 take each of them. There they are. And then we need to just compute the pairwise Manhattan distances between those. So we'll say Manhattan distance, come on, op x and just y equals absolute value of x minus y. And then we should be able to do the Manhattan distances of those. There we go. And then we just want the max. 3621. That is the right number. All right, so let's put that together. We'll say the size of x 
is x equals 1 take of, what do we do? Merge add 0 of x. And then we just do the max of comma of x and dist x. All right. So size of sample, 3621, size of input. Hmm. There we go, 12201, 12201. All right, we got our stars. Have a nice day.